In this video, I actually want to go over the eight steps of the TCA cycle. In the last video, we mentioned the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex being the activation step to get pyruvate into the form of acetyl-CoA, which can actually go through the TCA cycle. So the TCA, TCA cycle, like I mentioned, was eight steps. So just note before you begin the, watching the video that if you see a DH anywhere in an enzyme name, that means dehydrogenase. It's just me being lazy. I don't want to write it all the way out. Another thing, if you see a pink star, that means that that enzyme will be allosterically regulated. And I'll, I'll write this note in later. <laughs> anyway, so once we have an acetyl-CoA, it's a two-carbon molecule and it's activated and ready for the TCA cycle, it's going to go to the TCA cycle. So, the first step is acetyl-CoA, a two-carbon molecule, joins up with oxaloacetate, which is a four-carbon molecule, to form citrate, which is a six-carbon molecule. Now, note uh, oxaloacetate structure. Note here, note this part here, CH2COO minus, right? CH2 and a carboxyl group. That's the R group for aspartate. Notice that the only difference between oxaloacetate and aspartate is that this carbon here, this alpha carbon, at, in aspartate they would have the, the alpha amino group and a hydrogen. Oxaloacetate just has that, that um, carbonyl group there. So that's a simple way to remember the structure for oxaloacetate. Anyway, when these two things come together, we have two carbons here, four carbons here that come together to make six carbons. So we didn't lose any carbons, we didn't um, add or remove any carbons. However, this CoA is no longer on citrate. So the CoA, coenzyme A is gone. So in this reaction, we lose a coenzyme A. What's the name of this enzyme here? Well, we're making citrate. This is citrate synthase. And this step is actually allosterically regulated. And the reason for that is because it's actually, uh, in a sense, the first committed step of this pathway. So once we have citrate, we're going to turn it into isocitrate, which is basically just an isomer of it. Um, the only thing that really changed, if you notice, that uh, this carbon up here had a CH2, and this carbon over here had, a, had an OH group. So they basically just switched places. One of these H's came down, and then the OH went up there. So they traded places. So we didn't add or remove anything. All we did was isomerize it. This enzyme, the enzyme that catalyzed this reaction, is called aconitase. Now that seems a little bit weird. Where why would it be called aconitase? The reason why is because between citrate and isocitrate, there is an intermediate called aconitate. So the enzyme is named for that intermediate. It's a little bit confusing, but there is a reason for that name. Once we have isocitrate, the third step what we're going to do is we're going to take isocitrate and we're going to convert it into this this next molecule down here, which is alpha ketoglutarate. So what happens here? Um, this step is catalyzed by isocitrate dehydrogenase. Again, I'm just going to write DH. So what's the difference between these two molecules? Well, here we had six carbons. Now we only have five carbons. We lost a carbon somehow. Let's see, which, which carbon do we lose? This carboxyl group is the same. This, this here was a hydroxyl group, and now it's a, carbon di or a carbonyl group. So first of all, this isocitrate was oxidized. So, and that, that makes sense given this dehydrogenase step here. So, um, I remember in the other video I mentioned that the, part of the reason of the, the TCA cycle exists is to make NADHs and FADH2s. In this step, we actually, since we oxidize isocitrate, we're reducing NAD plus to make it NADH. But where did we lose uh, a carbon? Well, if you look at this carbon here, this carbon had a carboxyl group on it. Now it just has a CH2. So we actually lost a carbon dioxide in that step. And now we're left with this five carbon compound. Okay. Um, and again, isocitrate is another allosterically regulated enzyme. Now, now we have alpha ketoglutarate, and it's going to be turned into succinyl CoA. So alpha ketoglutarate to succinyl CoA. This enzyme, the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction, is called the alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex. So dehydrogenase means we would expect an alpha, uh, or excuse me, uh, a, re a redox reaction. So um, we would expect to see that alpha ketoglutarate was uh, oxidized. 
And that is actually the case. The difference here between this, this molecule here and this molecule here is that we got rid of this carb carboxyl group and we replaced it with a CoA, so we must have added a coenzyme A. So we added a coash. And this carboxyl group flew off. Now notice this carbon was bound to a car carbon up here, but now that same carbon is bound to a sulfur. Sulfur is slightly more electronegative, and more bonds to a more electronegative atom is an oxidation. So that means something else must have been reduced. Again, this is another reaction in which we create NADH from NAD+. Okay, and of course we lost that carbon as a carbon dioxide. Another allosterically regulated enzyme. Uh, what I want you to notice is that um, three of these four reactions that we've talked about so far, this one here, the isocitrate dehydrogenase, the alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase, and the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex step that, that happened here before the, before the reaction even happened, all three of those, right, all of them release actually not all all the four three of the four release carbon dioxide right that means they're irreversible which which is why they're allosterically regulated citrate synthase right is the fourth one that one is in a sense a committed step because it's the first it's the first step of the pathway right so um, that's why that one's regulated. But the other ones are all regulated because they're irreversible because they release a gas, carbon dioxide. Anyway, let's continue. So once we have this succinyl-CoA, the next it's going to be turned into succinate, which you'll notice it looks a lot different the way I've drawn it here, but it really isn't too different. Here we had a carboxyl group, two CH2s, and then a carbonyl. Here we have a carboxyl group, two CH2s, and a carbon dioxide. So all we did here was we got rid of this coenzyme A, and we, we made this a carboxyl group. So how did we do that? The enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is a little, has a funny name. It's called succinyl-CoA synthetase. So it was actually named for the reverse reaction. Another one of those kind of annoying names. <laughs> it's a little bit confusing sometimes to, to understand what's going on there. So in this step, we're, we're getting rid of that coenzyme A. This coenzyme A does not exist over here in succinate, so we're losing a coenzyme A. Um, in addition, this reaction, going this way, is uh, a very exergonic reaction. So exergonic, in fact, that we actually, in this, in this step, we actually create energy. And we create it in the form of GTP. So we're going to make a GTP and from from a GDP and an inorganic phosphate. So we're going to take a GDP and an inorganic phosphate and 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 uh, put them together to make a GTP. So we're actually gaining an energy out here. Um, and note we still have the same number of carbons. No carbons um, gained or lost. So the next step, we're going from succinate to fumarate. Um, so what happened here? Uh, we still have four carbons. All we did was we got rid of two a hydrogen off of this carbon and a hydrogen off of this carbon, and then made a double bond here. So um, this here, uh, if if you have less bonds to hydrogen, that is also an oxidation. Or you can think about it as more bonds to a more electronegative atom. Here we had bonds to hydrogen. Now we have bonds to carbon. Carbon is slightly more electronegative than hydrogen. So um, Succinate was oxidized to fumarate, so we would expect this enzyme name to have a to be a dehydrogenase, and it is. It's actually and it's acting on succinate, so it's succinate dehydrogenase. Now, in this step, we would expect to make it an NADH, but we don't. We, th and this is the step that actually, instead of making an NADH, we start with an FAD and make an FADH2. So, if succinate is oxidized. FAD is reduced. Now, um, how do you remember that this is the step that creates the FADH2? Because all the other steps in which re a redox reaction occurs, we create NADH. Uh, the way I remember it is that going from succinate, you you make a fumarate. Fumarate starts with the letter F, so does FADH2. So the, the reaction that creates one thing that starts with the letter F also creates the other thing that starts with the letter F. I mean, that's helpful to me. I don't know if it'll be helpful to you, but if it is, great. And if it isn't, do whatever you need to do to find a helpful way to remember it. 
So then we have step seven going from fumarate to malate. So notice all we did here was we added um, a hydrogen to this carbon, right, to get this, and then an OH to this carbon to get this. So we're adding an H and an OH. Essentially, we're adding water here. So we're going to add water. Okay. The enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is called fumarase because it acts on fumarate. Notice we haven't changed the number of carbons in a very long time. Um, we still have a four carbon molecule. So now with malate, what we're going to do with malate, malate is going to be turned back into oxaloacetate. So this is why it, this thing is called a cycle, right? We're going, we started off with oxaloacetate, we go through all these steps, and then we regenerate oxaloacetate. So in order to get from malate to oxaloacetate, we need to turn this OH into a carbonyl, right? So we need to oxidize it, so malate gets oxidized. Again, we would expect a dehydrogenase step, and that is what we have. This is malate dehydrogenase that catalyzes the step, and the dehydrogenase, so we would expect to create another NADH. Malate is oxidized, NAD plus is reduced to make an NADH. Okay. So what happened here? This um, this whole process, we started off with acetyl-CoA and an oxaloacetate, then we go through, right, and uh, what we do is we regenerate that four carbon oxaloacetate in this whole process. Meanwhile, we're also creating a bunch of NADHs, and we even create a GTP, and we also create an FADH too. So those are the steps of the TCA cycle. I hope that was helpful. Thank you for watching.